Everybody has been asking me about dump pouches, belt recommendations, a bunch of random questions here or there. So I thought I'd just do a video and I'd talk about first line gear or belt kits. So first line gear is defined as that gear which you're always going to have on you, right? So for most uh, military guys, it's going to be what's ever on their belts. Uh, for police officers, that's going to be their belt kit as well. For civilians, it's going to be the belt kit. So it's a pretty applicable topic to talk about. Um, as far as my philosophies behind it, you know that I'm a big fan of minimalistic. I think it's really important to have a minimal amount of gear, to have it that it's tight to your body, that way it's not moving around as you're running and twisting and going prone and all that type of stuff. And that finally it makes sense and that you don't carry what you don't need. So with those things in mind, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk a little bit about some of my theories involving uh, belt kit and what you should carry on you. It might be different than what you've done. I'm sure it's different than what a lot of other guys do. I'm sure there's some you know, dude who does way cooler stuff than me somewhere who's totally going to disagree with me, and that's fine. Um, this is just my opinion. And again, uh, different body types are going to mean that you're going to be carrying your equipment differently as well. So take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, if you have a comment, you disagree, please feel free to post as we have a discussion about this and why you think that XYZ is better or worse or that type of thing. Again, the more we share knowledge, the better we're all going to get, right, guys? So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's talk about belt kits. All right. To start off, we're going to go ahead and talk about the belt itself. It's a really important part of having a belt kit. So when it comes to belts, um, you have a couple different types. You have just the normal, the normal type where it's a friction type lock and you pull the belt through, or you have something like this where it's the Cobra buckle. Which do I recommend? Uh, just what, whichever one you want. To be honest, I mostly use the friction type locks a lot more, especially when I'm in the woods because I find that it's easier for me to adjust them, that type of thing, when I'm in the field. I like the cover buckles when I'm running like a full belt kit. Um, it's just what I prefer because it allows me to have everything set. That way I'm not having to cinch it down. All I have to do is just buckle it together and everything's where I want it to be. And with these types of belts, I typically just keep them on my rig since they're kind of hard to set up. But once they're in place, they keep all your gear there. As far as belt recommendations, depends on how much money you want to spend. Uh, the one I typically use when I'm teaching survival, evasion, resistance, and escape is the Wilderness Tactical Instructor Belt just happens to be named that. But it's a really stiff belt, that way it can hold up weapons, um, gear, kit, whatever you need. And at the same time, uh, it has that nice little D-ring, that way if you're doing any type of um, helicopter or vehicle ops, that way you can lanyard yourself in, yourself in with a personal retention lanyard. Now if you want to spend more money, you have something like the Ronin Senshi belt. It's an awesome belt that has some molly pattern on it, that way you can just attach your pouches directly to it. Really well made. Um, again, it's going to run you a lot more than the Wilderness Tactical Instructor Belt, but at the same time, it has a lot more features. So it just depends on what you need or what you want. The belt that I'm running right here is a uh, belt that I'm doing some um, testing and evaluation for for a uh, buddy's new company. We'll be talking about that belt a little bit later, but it's good. Um, there are some other companies that make good belts, but we're not going to get into them. Some of them uh, have some pretty terrible customer service, but they do make a great belt. So. No matter. In any case, let's talk about, first off, setting up your first line with your second line gear. So your first line gear is what you're always going to have on you, right? But then you have your second line gear. A lot of people don't think about these two and how they're going to be used in conjunction. So if I don't think about that, I'm going to have a lot of problems. That's the reason I keep my belt mostly open in the front. If I have a bunch of pouches here, and then as I'm moving around in my plate carrier, which is my second line gear, and I bend over, then I'm going to start getting these pouches pressed up into the plates, especially uh, police officers where they're wearing, you know, a couple different layers. I know a lot of the, um, the guys that I talk to, they've got, you know, the second chance vests underneath plates and all that type of stuff. So you have a lot of gear. So if you have pouches there, that's really going to mess up uh, the way you're able to move. And I think being able to move is a really important part of uh, staying alive. So set up your pouches so they don't interfere with your second line gear. And we're going to talk about that more as we move over to my left side. So when it comes to my left side, I've got mostly pouches for magazines and uh, to some extent for medical kits. When it comes to belt kits, they can do two things. We can plug holes and we can create holes, like I talked about with my plate carrier video. My belt is mostly for making holes, right? Putting some uh, rounds down range, that type of thing. So that's how you see it set up. But to a large extent too, it's also set up to if I had to ditch my plate carrier for whatever reason, like I... Yeah, I don't know, I fell off a boat or something like that and I had to ditch that thing because it doesn't have a flotation device on it. That way I can at least have gear that I can, to some extent, run uh, some type of mission or at least keep myself alive to some extent. Anyhow, moving over to the pouches. 
So I have pistol mag pouches right here. Typically I like to run either with one or none on my pistol pouches. I don't like to carry a whole lot of pistol ammo, but in this case I'm doing like a full loadout for you guys. So I've got the pistol pouches there. Uh, these are simple ones. Um, I have some uh, Kiwi Kydex inserts in there. That way it's a simple open top design. These do have flaps which are tucked away and that way I can just bring those flaps out, bring them over. That way I can have a closed system as well if I need to have more retention on the magazines. Moving back from my pistol pouches, I'm going to go to my primary pouches. In this case, for my Mark 18 or my AR-15 or the M4 or whatever you want to call it, guys. So on this, I have it about my 9 o'clock. And that's my preferred position for a primary mag magazine pouch. And the reason for that is as I come off my weapon and I reach down to the pouch, my hand's going to naturally cant back. And that's going to allow me to smoothly draw that magazine up, rock it into place, and load it. So I prefer that 9 o'clock position. But depending on... on your body type and you know if you got like a super long torso you know it might not work for you you just have to again put on your gear and train with it a lot of guys are really shy about actually wearing their gear and training with it on because they don't want to look I don't know they want to look stupid or something like that but hey if if you've got gear you might as well use it you might as well train to see if it actually works for you otherwise you're doing yourself a disservice something to think about is um, different types of manufacturers just find one that works for you um, this is an HSGI Taco. They're a great magazine pouch. You also have the ITWS Fast Mag, another great pouch. I have th that one on my uh, plate carry, and you also have the uh, G-Code Scorpions. Buy one that works for you. Make sure that it can mount to your belt. If you got that Ronin Senshi belt with all the Molly pouches, great. You can just mount that straight in. If you got an actual belt you're mounting it to, make sure that you have an option to mount it to your belt, not just the Molly, because that's not going to stay uh, very secure. Um, when it comes to those pouches, too, spend the money for a good one. Don't buy a bunch of crappy ones. You buy, don't buy a bunch of like condor pouches. They're going to fall apart. Then you're going to buy another pouch. And then finally, you're going to end up buying an HSGI Taco or ITWS Fast Mag. So you may think that you're saving yourself money, but in the long run, you're not going to. Moving back from my primary magazine pouch, we have my IFAC, my individual first aid kit. So a couple questions I've been getting about individual first aid kits. One, can I reach it with my right hand? Yes, now it is more difficult. There's some really cool, cool uh, IFACs out there where you can simply grab them and rip them off their tear away. I would definitely recommend one of those. I don't have them. You kind of got to work with what you got to some extent or another if you don't have the cash to put more uh, money into that type of setup. But in this case, I can either give my left hand or I also have an IFAC on the front of my uniform, which I'll be talking about in just a second here. Inside my fact, what do I have? I have hemostatic agents, chest seals, tourniquets, things like that. I also have baby's first trauma shears. That way I can really do some, uh, do some clothing cutting. That's what I'm into. So uh, just make sure you have enough stuff to treat some really serious type injuries. Um, if you don't have any medical training, you need to get some. Without medical training, all that kit is pretty useless. Well, not useless, but a lot less effective. So make sure you're trained up on that type of stuff. Even if you're not a medic, I'm not a medic, but to some extent or another, I've taken a lot of extra medical courses. That way I can effectively provi uh, provide uh, self-aid and buddy care and all that good old stuff. S-A-B-C. Oh, yeah. Let's also talk about plate carrier setup as well. If you notice on my plate carrier, I have the pouches open right over the AR mag pouch. That way I can smoothly draw it out. A lot of people don't think about how their first and second line gear are going to interact. So make sure you have those so they work well together. Otherwise, if you have a bunch of pouches sticking out here, it's gonna be really hard to draw that magazine out. And this particular magazine right here is for an emergency magazine change. So if I'm having to fumble with this, well, that kind of eliminates the uh, purpose of having that magazine pouch there in the first place. So again, something to think about, guys. Just really think about your kit when you're putting it together. Moving to my front, um, let's talk about the other IFAC I have. I have another IFAC just on the front of my uniform right here. This one I can easily get to with both hands, which I think is ideal. It's just going to be difficult. Some guys like to put them in a little dangler that hangs right below their uh, their plate carrier. I think that's great, but again, I like to have IFACs on my first line gear, and this would be my second line gear. But it is another option. Some people like to do the uh, whole Marsock style and run a nice little fanny pack right here. It looks super cool. You know, I really like the 80s vibe, so I'd recommend that. That looks pretty sick. Just make sure you have that nice and cinched down. That way that thing's not bouncing around. You don't want anything like that. So... If you can, I think the Dangler is a great option. Uh, Haley Strategic makes one. I'm pretty sure Faro Concepts makes one as well. Just different things you can use. This one right here is a simple little one. I have a uh, SWAT T tourniquet. I have a, a chest seal, gloves, hemostatic agent, all that good stuff. Before we move over to my right side, let's talk about these really quickly. Some people are like, hey, why do you have Chem 6? Or I see a lot of guys just wearing Chem 6 for no reason. I'm like, hey, why do you have the Chem 6? And they're like, 
because uh, I don't know, my favorite seal wore them. Hey, that's cool, dude. You know, uh, emulation is like a form of adoration or whatever that is. But make sure you have uh, stuff that makes sense, right? Don't have a bunch of crap on you that you don't need. This is like the maximum amount of gear that I'd ever have on my belt line. And I really hate stuff on my belt line. But in any cases, uh, camp sticks can be used to signify that rooms are clear. They can be used to signal aircraft, uh, comrades, that type of thing. Make sure you have those um, procedures put in place before you go ahead and do anything and start using these camp sticks or having them, because otherwise that makes no sense. Um, if you're running under night vision goggles, uh, of course, you're probably going to run with IR camp sticks. Just make sure you have the right camp sticks. Make sure you have your colors all set out, all that type of stuff. Uh, basically have that whole communications plan set out before you go out and start using Kemp 6. And again, if you don't need them, don't worry. No point to have a bunch of stuff that you don't need, right guys? In any case, if you do need them, a um, couple different ways you can mount them. Some guys uh, use zip ties, um, and then little thin zip ties, that way you can just break them off. I like to use duct tape or electrical tape, uh, just kind of twine it up, and then you can wrap it around and use that. That breaks pretty easily as well. Just use something. Uh, the zip ties, I always run out of those, so I always end up going to tape because that works just as well. So different options you have there. All right, let's talk about holsters for a second. So uh, something to notice about the holster that I have right here is that one, it's in a mid-ride. So what is a mid-ride? Mid-ride drops the gun down to about your belt line as opposed to being belt mounted where it's gonna be a little bit higher up. And the reason I like that mid-ride is because it's a smoother, more natural draw. Now I don't like the drop legs where you're like reaching down. If you have to like actually cant your body, the gun is too far low. It's far too low, right? You want to have this nice and stable on your body. So this way, I don't even have to move my body. I can just bring my hand straight down and that draw is going to be nice and smooth. So again, make sure you have a height for your gun that's going to make sense for you. Again, depending on, you know, your how long your torso is, some guys have like waists that go all the way up to their chest. I mean, that's pretty cool too. I like to be able to run. I wish I could run like those guys, but I can't. But in those cases, you might want to have a even, uh, a holster a little bit lower. If that's the case, make sure you have some type of leg strap. And the reason for the leg strap is to stabilize that weapon on your body because as you get this thing lower on your leg, things start sucking. If you at any point have to actually drop this where you have like two leg straps, you're doing something wrong. This is in the 90s, right? The reason uh, that sucks so bad is as you move that lower, that thing's gonna start swinging around your leg, it sucks. And the, the only way to make it work is you gotta cinch that thing down so you're cutting off circulation. And again, then you're limiting mobility, so I'm not a big fan. So at the most, you should just have one stabilizing leg strap on your, uh, on your gun holster. In this case, it's not even to keep it secure, rather it's just to keep it from lifting up when I draw. So this particular um, setup is from T-Rex Arms. I'm a big fan of them. You should go ahead and check out their uh, Instagram, YouTube, all that good stuff. But this is the light compatible Ragnarok. It's a level, you know, nothing retention. It's just a Kydex holster. They also make a, a hooded, uh, what would it be, level three retention holster. So different things. Just make sure that you're, uh, you're picking a level retention that's going to make sense for your job. Like, hey, you're a law enforcement. You're probably gonna want full retention. You're probably gonna want, you know, ALS system with a hooded system, something like uh, something that Safari Land makes. Um, if you're running ops, you're being all cool guy in high speed, hey, something like a Kydex or maybe even a Safari Land ALS is gonna work just as well. Just pick something that works for you. Um, practice with that, obviously. If you've got that hood, you have to really make sure you're locking that hood back up into place when you're reholstering that weapon. Otherwise, uh, you're probably gonna lose that thing. But I, I love these just standard tension holsters. They stay in, they're not going anywhere, right? So that's gonna work for me. Again, guys, if you look at my right side, I don't have any pouches there. And the reason for that is if I need to get to my weapon, I don't want anything impeding my draw. Again, it's gonna be important for me to draw that weapon quickly. If I actually need to get to my pistol, stuff's going sideways pretty quick. So I like to have all that stuff clear. Again, you don't need a whole lot of gear. You can carry a lot less and get just as much done. Everyone carries way too much gear. I probably carry way too much gear. So try to really cut down on that. The more minimalistic you are with your full loadout, the happier you're gonna be. It's gonna be less weight in your body. It's gonna be less uh, claims you're gonna make to the VA later in life. So things to think about, wisdom to live by. All right, guys, another question I typically get is war belts. People are like, dude, war belts are so cool. They're like all thick and padded and they seem so nice. Yeah, I agree, they're definitely really padded and it's really nice. And it definitely, uh, if you're carrying like a ton of crap on your belt, like those war belts are pretty cool. But at the same time, um, I don't like how they impede my movement because they're a little bit wider, therefore they're gonna kind of lessen my movement a little bit. I'm sure there's some really cool high-speed ones out there, but they're, 
they cost like two, three thousand billion dollars or something like that. So I'm not going to deal with them for the most part. Uh, again, I'm not, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying for me personally, I don't like them. I hate stuff on my belt. But in any case, the war belt just lessens my ability to move. And therefore, I'm not a big fan of them. Um, if you are going to go for a war belt, make sure you go for one that is made by a reputable company, right? Cry Precision, uh, T-Rex Arms just came out with a new one. So if you're really into them, check those guys out. Um, honestly, if you really wanna go for a, war, for a war belt, I'd recommend just getting that Ronin Senshi belt. That thing's still got Molly on it, but it still fits in the belt loops, really cool design. Again, just depends on what you want. If you really want like the old school, you know, giant tack tailor one, I mean, you can do that. Not that I'm calling out tactical tailor, they made some great stuff. Everyone's asking me, why don't I carry a dump pouch? The reason I see dump pouches used mostly is to, um, if you have a partially spent magazine, you can throw that in your dump pouch and that way later on in the firefight, you can be like, oh yeah, partially spent magazine, I still got it, I didn't you know, throw it off. Well, here's the thing, if, if you're taking the time to eject a partially spent magazine, you can take that time to re-index that magazine with all your kit that you got on. That's how I train personally. So I found that I never used a dump pouch. I used to carry a little Maxpedition roly-poly one, but I never used it. And again, depending on mission SOPs, uh, unit SOPs, whatever, you might be forced to carry one. I'm sorry, you know, deal with it. I guess use it in that case. But I hate having dump pouches because if I ever put stuff in them and they're starting to flop around, they're making a bunch of noise, a bunch of my magazines in there, and you always end up putting stupid stuff in there. So again, I just don't use dump pouches. It's just more crap on my belt that I don't need. And again, I wanna keep the amount of crap I have on me to an absolute minimum. And for me, dump pouches is extra bulk and weight that I don't need. So again, guys, set up your belt kit, keep it as minimal as possible. Once you actually have it set up, start moving around in it, start going prone, start rolling around on the ground, um, you know, doing some hardcore opera in your basement or whatever you do that, and see if it actually works for you. If it doesn't, rethink it, right? Um, I see a ton of guys where they'll come out to a course, I'll be teaching a rifle course, something like that, and they'll come with a super cool, you know, war belt setup, or super cool plate carrier setup, or whatever, and I'm like, dude, that looks super sick. That looks really cool. But then he can't move in it because he's actually never tried it on. It looks all brand new. So please, please train in your gear, work with it. If it works, you're doing something right. But um, try new things out, right? I'm always trying new things out. My belt kit constantly evolves. I'm sure in about a week from now, I'm going to look back in this video and I'm going to delete it because I hate myself. So um, in any case, guys, thank you for watching. Um, if you have any co questions, comments, concerns, you hate me, whatever, uh, comment. If you think I'm really handsome, that's cool too. Oh, that brings me to another point. Um, some guy asked me what underwear I wear. Uh, Sophie's, always Sophie's, man. Uh, you can't go wrong with them. They're good for the pool. They dry off really quick. So things to think about. All right, make sure you look cool, guys. Um, tune in next time. We'll be getting some new videos out on uh, packs and all that cool stuff. So and comms and helmets and all that cool guy crap. So stay tuned. Thanks, guys.